12 tips using the DJI Pocket 3. We're going to go really quick. We don't have time to waste. Let's get started. Object tracking has a special feature. If you double click on Mila Kunis's face, it's object track enabled using your Pocket 3. However, if you go down to the joystick and you push that left and right, you'll put her in the rule of thirds, meaning that your Pocket 3 will move relative to where you've positioned the joystick. This means you could show yourself in the rule of thirds and the gimbal does all the hard work, which is brilliant. It shows you more of what's in front of you. You can position it down as well. Just now my head is kept in the top left of the screen, which is really useful, just using the joystick. It also doesn't explain why that van's been following me for three days. Is that you, DJI? Yes, sir, I got the how-to guy inside right now. Mayday, mayday! Got the how-to guy coming over, sir. Just be quiet, he can't see us. Steve WB published this before I could do this video. An external mic adapter, like this, I'll leave a link in the description, that's USB-C to 3.5mm, Plug in your TRS cable into the Rode Wireless Go receiver. That's the similar one you get with like a Rode Wireless Go. Then plug in your TRRS into the adapter and plug that into the USB-C port. By the way, this will work on any of the USB-C ports. To show this is working, I'm tapping on the screen on the transmitter on the Rode Wireless Go 2. Let's do a test. So this is the Rode Wireless Go 2 connected to the bottom port. So this is if you bought just the standard kit, you could use your Rode Wireless Go, which doesn't come with those battery adapters. So this is just going into the USB-C port. How does the sound sound? Testing one, two, three. So what about the best sound settings on the Pocket 3? This might be a bit controversial, but I've just found in my own test that the best sound on this camera is to actually increase the gain to like plus four. Let me show you a test. So this is the gain set to zero when you first get the camera and I found that it was just too soft to get some clear audio. I was testing at night and you could barely hear me. Let's switch to four in one, two, three. Is this any better? This is the sound set to plus four dB gain. I'm sure some sound experts are there gonna say this is wrong, but I just feel like this is the best sound quality you're gonna get and I think you can even go a little bit higher. Oz Peter's probably gonna comment and give us the exact science behind the preamps and stuff, but. What do you think? This will work for any external mic, but I'm going to use the DJI mic for this. Swipe from the right and make sure Pro Mode is enabled. Then you'll see the second icon on the top says DJI. Click the Transmitter 1 Gain. Notice I've set mine to plus 4. I don't know what to call this, but it's the Object Tracking Camera Dolly Speed Ramp Tutorial. Okay, I'm going to go really quick though. I've got the DJI Pocket 3 connected to a Zekti camera slider, remote controlled. It'll move left and right in the same direction. And what I'm gonna do is object track my hand very slowly, 4K 30 frames per second. Have a look and I'll show you the result afterwards. So I push play on the motorized dolly. The dolly moves left and before then I object track my hand using the screen on the DJI Pocket 3. I move very slowly so the tracking doesn't lose me. Drop the tea bag in the cup and that's scene one. Now I move my hand all the way back again and do exactly the same thing to retrieve the spoon on the other side. I'm speeding this up for the video. I do a few more different scenes and then this is the result. What about the best slow motion settings in 4K 120? If you swipe from the right, you'll see an adjustment custom. We can set the sharpness and the noise reduction. Set noise reduction to at least one. This is 4K 120, sharpness minus two, noise reduction plus one. I also tested sharpness set to zero and noise reduction at plus one. It's getting a little too sharp. Plus two sharpness looks just too much, but you might like that look. Notice the three. I think the best one might be zero or even minus two sharpness. Now, 10 bit colors. You wanna actually set your camera to always be in the D log M mode. I feel like that's the best one for like everybody out there. And the reason you want that 10 bit is it gives you a billion colors and like it hasn't rained in Australia, right? The grass looks horrible, but I could make it look a little bit greener and looks a little bit better. And you can do that because of 10 bit. You can fix the sky if you want to. Now, the way you do that is you swipe from the right, make sure pro mode is enabled on your camera and then set D log M. You'll also see normal, but that's only an 8 bit. HLG in there, which is also very good and also in 10 bit, but I think D log M is the best one for most people. To color grade, download the LUT from DJI's website at that link 
and then in DaVinci you can just drag it over your clip once it's installed. Now, object tracking tip. If you've connected your DJI MIMO app to your device, it works wirelessly, you don't need any adapters, it just goes straight to the device, or something on the screen, it will track your face, and it seems to prioritize faces. It's always better if you want to do object tracking to use the screen. I don't know why that is, the object tracking doesn't seem to work that well on the app. Double tap the hand. Active track is enabled on the hand. Now I don't know why, but it just seems to work a lot better when you do it off the screen. Now, it has lost me. It yes, in this example, we double tap that. I set active track to fast, and it's actually really, really sticky when it's got enough contrast. Hopefully DJI will improve object tracking in future firmware upgrades, but it's not too bad. Now the 4K 120 does look absolutely amazing. However, there are some caveats and tricks you should know about this. Let's show you. Since normal video mode only has 4K 60, you have to go into slow motion mode. The problem is, that means your whole video is in slow motion. What if you want to speed ramp things up, or play normal speed and then slow it at a specific moment? Well then you could go in here and speed up the slow moments and run the slow motion parts at normal speed. By the way, I changed the speed to 400% at the start and the end. This is the result. I want to show you a weird little quirk on the Pocket 3. It's not really a tip, but something you should be aware of. If you're using an external adapter plugged into your own microphone at the bottom and you've recorded some footage, you won't be able to hear the sound in the speaker on the playback. And I'll prove it to you. So I stop recording. I go to playback. The file is playing back, but there's no sound. If you unplug, plug into your own microphone at the bottom, and you've recorded some. That's speech, a little weird. You won't be able to the next one is 32-bit internal float recording. A lot of people have mentioned this in videos, but I just wanted to go over it. The theoretical output of this 32-bit internal float is like 1,600 dB. This microphone only sends 24-bit mono sound at like 144 dB to the Pocket 3. So you've got 1,600 internally when you push that little red button, if you can see it over there. See there's a little USB-C port. You can pull the sound files off and the noise floor is so much better on 32-bit internal recording. Another annoying thing that the Pocket 3 does and you can fix this, and most of you know this, you can go into landscape mode and that's the default when you flip the screen up. When you flip into the other mode, it goes to portrait. You can disable this in the setting and just make sure it's always on landscape. That means if you are recording in this mode with a screen flipped vertically, it'll still record a 16 by 9 video, which I think, to be honest, is probably the best way to record anyway, unless you are doing TikToks, but you can also set it the other way if you prefer doing vertical video portrait style. Kind of important is to auto sync the audio when you start recording, and that has to do with the 32 bit internal float. It's a setting that you can just switch on, and it basically means when you push record on your DJI Pocket 3, it automatically starts recording on the backup in 32-bit float. Another tip is enable the low cut filter. It just helps with background noise like fans and those kinds of things when you're recording. And thirdly, the Pocket 3, when you're using the external mic, is sending 24-bit mono to your device, which means you need to switch to stereo when you're actually doing your video editing. A lot of you would know this, but it's just important and I thought I'd mention it so some people don't and they start hearing weird things when people are using headphones on their video. I'm seriously considering never using my Sony camera again because I just like the image quality out of this. That's how serious I am about the Pocket 3. It seems to just shoot nice, color grades easy, the workflow is much easier. Maybe if you get a bit of spare cash you can buy this camera. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. Subscribe to the channel even though I don't make videos anymore and uh, see you again next time. Thank you.